Hi everyone, welcome to Forensic Examinations 9 Volume Shadow Copies. In this video I'm going to show you how to mount um, and take copies of the contents of Volume Shadow Copies, okay, which are like Windows backups. Um, as an examiner you're highly likely to come across information within Volume Shadow Copies that are going to be of interest to you, you know, such as uh, um, images or keywords hits documents things like that okay the, the problem is when you look at volume shadow copies through your forensic software they appear as a, a set of large files which are full of what appears to be random information okay so you don't have the ability to see any times or dates that are associated with this data um, however once you mount these volume shadow copies they are all put back into their original locations and you're able then to look at the metadata such as the file created times associated with them all right so if i open up uh, a windows 7 machine right this is our suspect machine which i've taken an image of all right if i quickly log in and show you the desktop as you can see the desktop is blank all right there was a file on here which i've deleted all right um, that file is going to be contained within the volume shadow copies uh, because I created a restore point okay so if I just take you quickly through what these volume shadow copies are within Windows 7 they are um, essentially a backup of data that's on the hard drive within the volume so they can include user specific information um, you know stuff that's created by the user documents images etc etc all right Windows um, XP and Windows uh, Vista also have volume shadow copies or that sorry they have system restore points um, these don't include data that's created by the user they have system settings um, it, they was designed basically um, so that if you were to install a piece of software um, which ended up making your system very unstable you would have a restore point to roll back to um, as if you know it's like going back in time basically so this is a system restore front end here in windows 7 all right if i do if i go and have a look at the restore points that are available two were created when i installed um the guest editions within virtual box all right so they were automatically created by the operating system the two here i've created manually all right one was created when there was a file on the desktop and one was created when there wasn't after i deleted the file okay this is going to be the one i believe that has the file in it all right but i mean you're not going to use this front end because this is your suspect machine you're not going to touch this i just wanted to show you that the desktop is empty the recycle bin is empty all right so we'll shut that down because it's going to be causing a drain in sift all right i have autopsy open and i've opened the evidence files that i created for this machine all right now in the root of the drive you're going to see a folder there called system volume information now clicking on that will present you with all these files here now these are the files that will contain the information within your volume shadow copies all right we are going to be mounting these to look at that information and see what we can claw back now what would normally happen is in your forensic software these files would be highlighted as containing images um, you know keyword hits you could be looking for specific names or addresses if you find that these files get flagged up you need to start looking at mounting these volume shadow copies either browsing them or mounting them so that you can create a copy of them uh, to be viewed as they were originally right i'm going to show you both both techniques all right so um, i'll also show you while i'm here the desktop for the user that we just looked at just so you can see that the file is gone um, within autopsy it's gone um, normally when you delete something in autopsy will highlight that file is still being present and you can recover it that isn't the case here all right, look on the desktop as you can see it's empty all right so we'll minimize that the first thing you need to do is to mount your evidence files using EWF mount or mount EWF if you're not using SIFT 214 like I said in the last video SIFT uh, 214 uh, doesn't seem to like me using mount EWF it gives me an error however EWF mount 
works exactly the same so you need to mount your evidence um, into a location uh, as a single file all right so it's going to be uh, my evidence is basically on a shared drive uh, in this location star I mean you'll remember it from the last video and you specify the location you want it to mount to which is say here it's going to give me an error because I've probably already mounted it yes so if I just do an ls there's the file right so the evidence files that are in here I don't want to sort of repeat from the last video but just in case you're not sure these evidence files here are now mounted as a single file there all right it's basically like a dd image okay now once you've done that all right you are going to mount the data that's in there as, as a as a virtual drive using iSCSI and make it available for a windows machine to, to view over a network now i know windows isn't free and, and that's the point of these videos but windows comes windows 7 comes with a tool called vss admin all right and that's what you're going to use to mount these volume shadow copies and to create either a symbolic link to to manually browse through or to create a dd image of the contents of those volume shadow copies okay so um i've already mounted that your next step if this is the first time you're going to be doing this uh, you need to edit a file called ietd.conf all right and it's a configuration file it tells iSCSI the iSCSI service where to look for your evidence all right these two lines you need to add all right they won't be there these two lines will be there just rem them out forget about them and add what i've put here all right um this here is very important because you're telling the iSCSI uh, service where to look all right now it's as i've shown you uh sorry uh this is where my evidence is here it's in mount ewf so we say in mount ewf and ewf1 is the file all right so enter that in save it close it out next uh command you want to put is service iSCSI target restart and hit return and that'll obviously restart the iSCSI service the next thing you want to do is get your ip address all right which on this machine is uh 192.168.07 remember that go to your windows 7 forensic machine now click on the start button, click in the search box unless it's in your start menu already and type in iSCSI and you'll get the iSCSI initiator come up. Click on that. In the target box there, put in the IP address that you uh, have assigned to your win uh, to your SIFT workstation. Right? So if you remember it was 192.168.07. Click quick connect and it'll say connected click done as you can see it's already picking up the drives all right if you go to my computer we've got an e and an f drive all right this uh these are the drives that belong to your suspect machine all right so if i click there you can see sharkster there he is all right so what you want to do next is run the vss admin tool now you need to run this as system um, it doesn't like you run it as a normal user so run it as administrator really I didn't like that just now run as administrator yeah okay we'll try it then vss admin what you, right sorry your command is uh, vss admin list shadows uh, forward slash four equals and then the drive letter that contains the volume shadow copies now on this it's going to be the local disk f here which is the main partition on the suspect machine so it's f colon hit return and it lists all the stuff there all right as you can see there are four volume shadow copies these are the four if you remember two were manually created which are these two and two were automatically created you can tell which are which due to uh, only because there's um, the time and day creation is there. All right, those are the earlier ones. These are the later ones here. All right, this is going to be the one that contains 
the file that I'm after, right? Because I created that when the file was there, and then I created that when the file was gone. Um, pointlessly, because we're not even going to look at that when you've already seen that the file isn't there. But I'm going to mount this one, and you're going to see that the file is there. All right. So the next command, okay, is um, we're going to make a symbolic link first off. All right. So you can browse it manually. So the command is mk link space forward slash d space. Now you want to specify the location and the name of your symbolic link. So I'm just going to check in the root of the C drive, right, and call it shadow um, 10. All right, because you can see there's a volume shadow copy number there. This will change on different machines. Okay, so I'm only doing this as an example, but a better idea would to be uh, to use something like a section of the shadow copy ID just because it's unique and won't change across machines. Um, recently I used just the numbers and when I moved to a different machine the numbers changed and it caused me a bit of a problem okay so it's uh, mk link forward slash d uh, putting it in the root calling it shadow 10 space and then it's uh, two backslashes question mark backslash and you want to add this portion here okay so it's global root backslash device backslash hard disk volume shadow copy 10 and another backslash don't forget that backslash because otherwise it won't work it'll create your symbolic link but it won't go anywhere okay so don't that that's the most important part don't forget that or it won't work press return and it's created a symbolic link so if i go to the root of my c drive i have a symbolic link right shadow 6 i was messing around earlier on didn't work shadow 10 double click on that and then here's a volume shadow copy of the hard drive. Now this may give me a permission error. Oh no, it didn't. Great. Now this is the Sharks the profile. If I look on the desktop, there's that file. All right, it's basically a VDF, a VDI file, which was a, a virtual hard drive for one of my virtual box machines, right? But it's there. You can copy that out and look at it. This could be an image. It could be a document. It could be all sorts of things. This is one file, but I mean, I could have folders upon folders of different files and, and images and documents and stuff. It, it's a real gold mine, all right? Um, so I've shown you there how to create a symbolic link. You can also uh, take a DD image. Now, you need to have DD installed or Robocopy is another one. I, I tend to use DD. Now, it's not installed on this um, virtual machine, all right? Um, I can't remember exactly where to download it from, but I'll give you the command. But first, before we do that, these shadow copy IDs don't look anything like the file names for the volume shadow copies, unfortunately. If I get uh, autopsy back up, I'll go back to the volume shadow copy folder. All right. Uh, sorry, the system volume information folder is here these are the files now you'll see from the names there you've got 380 60 60 d93 if we flip back over to our windows machine nope nothing like that at all okay what you need to do um, using either a hex editor or your forensic software is to uh, which I have handily installed And we'll open up uh, this file. This is a vol one of the volume shadow copy files here, okay? What you need to do is browse into the file uh, 144 bytes. Now, I can't count in hex, so let's set it at that. So 144 bytes in, okay, which will take you here, all right? And f the next 16 bytes will be your shadow copy ID. All right, so if I bring this back up here, all right. However, C019, none of them start with C019. It's a GUID, all right, and sections of the GUID, as you can see, it's broken down into one, two, three, four, five sections. Some of the sections are in Little Endian, which means you read them backwards, and some are in Big Endian, which means you read them forwards, all right. So the first four bytes, 
uh, are in little endian. So it starts 4E8F19C0. Now if we scroll down, uh, it's that one there. Alright, so as you can see, 4E8F19C0 matches there. 57BE is the next section. 57BE is in Little Endian. The next section again, 47A9. 47A9 in Little Endian. The next two sections are in Big Endian. So it's 9B2B, 9B2B, and 3F, FE, da 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 da. There. All right. I know uh, N case, if you right click, if you select these 16 bytes and right click to bookmark them, there's an option there to present them as a GUID and it automatically. Uh, Re realigns them to, to show them as they would appear as your volume shadow copy ID. If you don't have N case, just remember the first four bytes, little endian, next two bytes, little endian, uh, yeah, next two bytes, little endian, next two bytes, little endian, next two bytes, big endian, last load of bytes, what is it, six bytes, are uh, big endian, all right? But once you get the first four, I mean, you, they tend to match up there, so you're okay. We are not going to be looking at this one. This is just an example, all right? 144 bytes in, remember, 16 bytes. Rearrange to get your GUID, which is your shadow copy ID number, all right? Um, we are going to be looking at... I know this is the one we're going to be looking at anyway, all right? Just because I know that it was the one that was created when the file was there. However, when you have your case open all right and you've got your suspect machine you're obviously not going to know from this list which is which use this technique here the 144 bytes and 16 over to to work out which volume shadow copy you want all right so the next comment uh, the next uh, command that we're going to put in all right is uh dd all right assuming you have dd installed you'll, you'll need to go to your dd uh folder first of all right i don't have dd installed but this is the command you'll need right is dd space if equals backslash backslash full stop backslash and it's this line here which is where's that gone there you take hard disk volume shadow copy and the number all right don't worry about the backslash on that one so it would be sort of hard disk volume shadow copy 10 space all right of equals and then the location that you want to put the dd image of that volume shadow copy so say if i wanted to put it on in the root of C, you'd go C and then give it a name. So I would call it shadow. Um, like I said, numbers can be a problem. So, so try and use like the, the ID number. So I'd put something like F6C9.IMG and then hit and then sorry, space, then two dashes and then it's local WRT, local write, okay? That tells the computer that you're writing to one of the local drives. It's fine. If you don't put that in, it'll throw you out. But when it throws you out, it'll tell you anyway that you should put that in. And that command will then run. Depending on the hard drive, um, as with timelines in the last video, it may well run overnight. It can take a long time if you've got large drives to look at, okay? Um, the result is you'll have... A DD image file which you can then access with your forensic software to view the files as they were at that point in time during that snapshot okay you can get some really excellent information out of these volume shadow copies um, the techniques by the way that I've used um, in this video I read on Corey Harrell's blog which is um, journey into incident response you should check it out there's a lot of good stuff on there um the any any all the techniques that i've used here have come from his blog all right so um i highly recommend that you check it out but um if you have any questions please feel free as usual to drop me a line and and i'll help you where i can but uh, thanks for watching and uh, all the best